and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I recently upgraded to a Nikon Z7 II, which is a mirrorless camera. Previously, I was using a 10-year-old D3200, which is a crop sensor camera. And because I am on a budget, I kept the same lenses, but just upgraded the body only. And I kind of wondered, does upgrading the camera body really make such a difference if the more important equipment is lenses and I'm keeping the lenses the same. So I thought I would put it to the test. I am going to kill two birds with one stone today. I am going to shoot some self portraits to use for some YouTube videos that I recently filmed. However, I will be shooting on both cameras, but using the same studio setup and lighting setup and edits and compare the photos side by side to see if there's a difference in quality or is upgrading the camera body really about more functionality and ease of use? So let's get started. So here are my camera settings for the moment. I still need to test these settings. And then I'm gonna be shooting with a 35 millimeter 1.8 lens for both cameras. And we're starting off with the mirrorless. Maybe I'm just not used to using the mirrorless yet and all its functions, but I'm having some trouble setting the focus before I jump into frame. So I'm going to stack this chair, this stool up to use as a substitute for me. And then once the camera shutter starts, I'm going to run up to here, toss this chair aside and then take my photos. Don't try this at home. That should do the job. Okay, timer is starting. I've got 10 seconds. It worked. So now that the mirrorless portraits are done, I'm going to duplicate the exact same settings onto my D3200 body and keeping the same 35mm lens on it. So I've written down, oh my god, my handwriting, the exact uh, shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO that I use to take the portraits on the mirrorless, and I'm going to rep replicate those exact same numbers onto the D3200 right now. So we were shooting at f2.8, and then we were doing an ISO of Oh my god, it's like I don't remember how to use this camera. <laughs> we were doing an ISO, an ISO of 320. I'm just gonna go with 200 because I can't really set like a specific ISO on this camera. And that's the closest one. And then for the shutter speed, we're gonna do one over 640. Okay, there you have it. Let's go take some portraits. Right now I'm in Lightroom and I'm going to begin the initial edits for these self-portraits shot from both the Nikon Z7 II and the Nikon D3200. I'm going to be editing them at the same time. So right now I'm just making a folder and setting the saving settings. 
So I'm going through a couple of options of photos that I liked and I'm just making basic adjustment edits to them. So nothing like too crazy, just basic like exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights, that kind of thing. And I'm definitely brightening up these photos a lot, it seems. Oh, there's a lot of good ones in here that I, that I like. I love taking self-portraits. I kind of am embarrassed to admit that because it seems very like vain or self-centered, but I think they're like a really great practice for getting better at taking portraits in general and for seeing how it feels to be on the other side of the camera so that you can better direct uh, your clients or models when you are shooting with other people. So now I'm bringing the images into Photoshop and starting off with one that was taken on the D3200, I believe. I'm just adding a bunch of adjustment layers. I'm making like quick, simple, kind of like my go-to um, creative edits. I'm not doing anything too crazy. And because I'm too lazy to edit the background, fill it in with that uh, kind of like rainbow unicorn cloud <laughs> background that I have. I'm just gonna switch out the background to something solid and that way we can see the portrait for what it is a little bit clearer as well. I don't know why I always end up switching out the background. I might as well just not shoot with one. So just playing with some gradients just to give it kind of like the same vibe as that initial backdrop that I had up behind me. And, you know, just to, it's really just to throw something out there. I know it's not perfect. I know it doesn't even look realistic, but I just wanted just to do this, these edits really quickly. So I'm saving that file and then I'm gonna open up one that was shot on the Nikon Z7 II. And I'm gonna apply the exact same edits. So I'm just making it like a really, really fast process. I don't know why I was feeling so impatient in editing these self-portraits. Uh, and I'm just trying to make them look a little bit more similar in terms of the cropping. I realized I did shoot them initially at different, slightly different distances. So they have different crops, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker. So I'm saving both images. And then now let's take a look at them side by side. So I've laid both portraits out side by side so we can see a comparison. The Nikon Z7 II is on the left and on the right we have the Nikon D3200 portrait. So keep in mind these have the same settings and they have the same edits applied to them. And from first glance these portraits look pretty much the same. I don't see much of a difference in quality or lighting or anything like that. Um, I. I think, honestly, the main difference that I encountered in my experience in shooting these portraits was really just I had a hard time with the autofocus in the beginning with the Nikon Z7 II. And I think that's probably due mostly to using a lens adapter, which I did some like research online really quickly and I found that there are some lags in the focusing when you do use the adapter. So that kind of just makes it a little bit frustrating when you're shooting self-portraits. I have used the Nikon Z7 II on another product photo shoot recently just to test out the camera. I was using the 18 to 300 millimeter lens, but again, I was using the adapter and it worked absolutely fine in that case but I was behind the camera the whole time it was easier for me to know if the focus was set properly or not and not have to do like a lot of guesswork as that's what happens when I'm on the other side of the camera. So as you saw in that up close detailed comparison on my computer 
the end result has virtually no difference between the Nikon Z7 II and the Nikon D3200 using the same lens and the same camera settings. So it kind of comes down to just like ease of use. In terms of the speed of the shutter and things like that, I don't know the lens converter makes much of a difference and it's hard to tell when doing self portraits because I'm usually shooting in like a burst mode or I'm using a wireless uh, remote trigger. So I've yet to test that out. But in terms of getting the same result, the results are virtually the same. So it just comes down to ease of use. So right now for something like a self portrait where the focus is really important and I can't spend so much time behind the camera trying to manually control these settings, I would actually say I would prefer to use the D3200 for these self portraits as opposed to the mirrorless. But in the end, I would have to say it's totally still worth upgrading to a mirrorless and to the Z mount lenses eventually because that's like, from what I've heard from reviews, that's kind of like the best combination out there. And I think there would be definitely less of a chance or zero to none chance of kind of running into the issues that I ran into today while doing this portrait experimentation. I hope that was helpful for you to see the comparison side by side of the Nikon D3200 versus a Nikon Z7 II. And if you found this video helpful or fun to watch, I hope you can give it a like, a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.